I'll carry on as long as I, uh, I write music and people want to buy it. That's important to me. Freddie Mercury is not who you think he is. The iconic lead singer of Queen remains one of the most legendary figures in rock music. His flamboyant stage presence, powerful voice, and ability to engage audiences were unparalleled. Yet behind the public persona lay a complex and often private individual. Freddie's life was filled with contradictions, mysteries, and hidden truths, many of which only came to light after his death. In this article, we'll delve deep into 15 of the most intriguing secrets of Freddie Mercury's life, exploring his background, struggles, relationships, and the legacy he left behind. Number 15. Freddie's Real Name and Cultural Heritage Freddie Mercury was born Farok Bulsara on September 5, 1946, on the East African island of Zanzibar, part of modern-day Tanzania. His parents, Bomi and Jer Bulsara, were Parsi immigrants from India who followed the ancient religion of Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, played a significant role in shaping Freddie's early life. The Bulsara family, like many Parsi families, placed great emphasis on education and traditional values. While Freddie never spoke publicly about his religious beliefs, his cultural heritage influenced him in ways that may not be immediately apparent. Freddie's early years were spent in Zanzibar and India, where he attended St. Peter's School, a British-style boarding school in Panchgani, near Mumbai. It was here that his teachers first noticed his musical talent, particularly his ability to play the piano. At St. Peter's, Freddie formed his first band, The Hectics, where he played piano covers of rock and roll songs. His love for music was evident from an early age, and it was clear that Freddie had an innate ability to command attention, even as a young boy. Freddie's real name, Farak Bulsara, reflected his heritage, but when he moved to England with his family in 1964, during the Zanzibar Revolution, he began to distance himself from his past. His decision to change his name to Freddie Mercury was not just a stage name. It was a way of reinventing himself, of creating a persona that reflected his larger-than-life ambitions and desire for fame. The name Mercury may have been inspired by the Roman god associated with communication and travel both of which resonated with Freddie's restless spirit and desire to connect with people worldwide. While Freddie may have distanced himself from his Zoroastrian heritage publicly, his roots were always part of his identity. He was buried in accordance with Zoroastrian customs, a reflection of the importance his family placed on their religious beliefs. Even in death, Freddie's connection to his past remained intact. Despite his efforts to transform himself, into the rock legend the world came to know and love. Number 14. Freddie's Relationship with His Teeth One of Freddie Mercury's most distinctive physical features was his overbite, caused by having four extra teeth in the back of his mouth. This condition, known as supernumerary teeth, pushed his front teeth forward and gave him the prominent buck-tooth appearance that became part of his signature look. While many celebrities would have undergone surgery to correct such a feature, Freddie chose not to. His decision was not just about maintaining his image, he feared that altering his teeth might affect his vocal range. Freddie was famously self-conscious about his teeth, often covering his mouth with his hand when he laughed or smiled in public. Despite his insecurities, Freddie's teeth became part of his charm. Some vocal coaches have speculated that his overbite may have contributed to the unique resonance of his voice, allowing him to project his sound more effectively. Whether or not this is scientifically accurate, Freddie's decision to leave his teeth as they were reflects his willingness to embrace his imperfections and turn them into assets. In interviews, Freddie rarely discussed his teeth, but his self-consciousness about them was evident in his behavior. It's a testament to his confidence and charisma that he was able to become one of the most beloved frontmen in rock history, despite feeling insecure about such a visible aspect of his appearance. Freddie's ability to turn what many would consider a flaw into part of his persona 
is just one example of his ability to defy expectations and redefine the norms of rock stardom. Number 13. His True Love, Mary Austin. While Freddie Mercury was known for his flamboyant stage presence and his relationships with men, the most important person in his life was Mary Austin. Freddie and Mary met in the early 1970s, before Queen became famous, and quickly formed a deep bond. They lived together for several years, and Freddie even referred to her as his common-law wife. Though they eventually ended their romantic relationship, when Freddie came to terms with his sexuality, their emotional connection remained unbreakable. Freddie once said, All my lovers asked me why they couldn't replace Mary, but it's simply impossible. The only friend I've got is Mary, and I don't want anybody else. This quote reveals the depth of Freddie's love for her, which transcended physical attraction. In his will, Freddie left Mary the bulk of his fortune, including his mansion, garden lodge, and his recording royalties. He also entrusted her with the location of his ashes, a secret she has kept to this day. Mary Austin was the one constant in Freddie's life, and their relationship defied traditional definitions of love and companionship. While Freddie had many relationships over the years, none were as enduring or as meaningful as the one he shared with Mary. She was his confidant, his muse, and his closest friend, and her influence on his life cannot be overstated. Even after Freddie's death, Mary remained devoted to preserving his legacy, guarding his secrets, and ensuring that his memory would be honored. Number 12. The Mystery of His Sexuality Freddie Mercury's sexuality has long been a topic of speculation and intrigue. While he never publicly identified as gay or bisexual during his lifetime, it was widely known within his inner circle that he had relationships with both men and women. Freddie himself avoided labels, preferring to live his life on his own terms and refusing to be defined by societal norms. In the 1970s, when Queen was at the height of their fame, Freddie's flamboyant stage persona and androgynous fashion sense led to rumors about his sexuality. He played with these rumors, often exaggerating his on-stage persona to provoke and entertain his audience. Yet, in his private life, Freddie was far more reserved about his relationships. His love life was a carefully guarded secret, and he rarely discussed his personal affairs in interviews. Freddie's sexuality became more public in the 1980s when he began a long-term relationship with Jim Hutton, an Irish hairdresser. The two were together for seven years until Freddie's death, and Jim remained by his side throughout his battle with AIDS. Despite their close relationship, Freddie never publicly acknowledged Jim as his partner, choosing instead to keep that aspect of his life private. Freddie's refusal to label his sexuality can be seen as a reflection of his desire for artistic and personal freedom. He lived in a time when being openly gay or bisexual was still highly stigmatized, particularly in the music industry. By refusing to conform to society's expectations, Freddie challenged the boundaries of gender and sexuality, becoming a symbol of liberation for many of his fans. His music, much like his life, was a celebration of individuality and self-expression, and his legacy as an LGBTQ icon continues to resonate with people around the world. Number 11. The AIDS Diagnosis He kept hidden. In the mid-1980s, rumors began to circulate about Freddie Mercury's health. He appeared increasingly frail in public, and fans began to speculate that something was seriously wrong. Despite these rumors, Freddie continued to perform and record with Queen, determined to keep his private life out of the spotlight. It wasn't until November 23, 1991, just 24 hours before his death, that Freddie publicly confirmed that he had been diagnosed with AIDS. Freddie had been diagnosed with HIV in 1987, but he chose to keep the diagnosis a secret from the public. He confided in a few close friends including his bandmates in Queen, but even they were sworn to secrecy. Freddie's decision to keep his illness private was likely motivated by several factors, 
including the stigma surrounding AIDS at the time. In the 1980s, the disease was often associated with the LGBTQ community, and many people with AIDS faced discrimination and prejudice. By keeping his diagnosis private, Freddie was able to protect himself and his loved ones from the harsh realities of public scrutiny. Despite his declining health, Freddie continued to work tirelessly in the studio, recording some of Queen's most iconic songs during this period. Tracks like The Show Must Go On and These Are the Days of Our Lives take on added poignancy when viewed in the context of Freddie's illness. Even as his body weakened, his voice remained as powerful as ever, and his determination to continue making music in the face of such adversity is a testament to his incredible strength and resilience. Freddie's decision to keep his diagnosis private until the very end was a reflection of his fiercely independent spirit. He did not want to be remembered as a victim of AIDS. He wanted to be remembered for his music and his artistry. In the years since his death, Freddie has become a symbol of the fight against HIV AIDS, and his legacy continues to inspire awareness and activism around the world. Number 10. His Love for Cats Freddie Mercury was known for his love of cats, and his devotion to his feline friends was no secret to those who knew him well. Over the years, Freddie had several cats, including his favorites, Delilah, Goliath, Lily, and Oscar. He even dedicated an entire album sleeve to them on Queen's 1985 release, Mr. Bad Guy, which featured a note that read, This album is dedicated to my cat Jerry, also Tom, Oscar, and Tiffany, and all the cat lovers across the universe. Screw everybody else. Freddie's love for his cats was so strong that he would often call home from the road to check on them, asking whoever was caring for them to put the cats on the phone so he could speak to them. His longtime partner, Jim Hutton, recalled that Freddie would spend hours playing with and talking to his cats, treating them like family members. Delilah, in particular, held a special place in Freddie's heart, and he even wrote a song about her titled Delilah, which appeared on Queen's 1991 album Innuendo. Freddie's affection for his cats was indicative of his gentle and caring nature, which was often at odds with his wild, larger-than-life stage persona. While he may have been a rock star to the world, at home, he was simply a man who loved his pets and found comfort in their companionship. His devotion to his cats offers a glimpse into the softer, more private side of Freddie Mercury that few people ever got to see. Number 9. His Friendship with Elton John Freddie Mercury and Elton John shared a close and enduring friendship that spanned many years. Both men were flamboyant performers who dominated the music scene in the 1970s and 1980s, and their mutual respect and admiration for each other's talents formed the basis of their bond. While their public personas were larger than life, behind the scenes, they supported each other through some of their most challenging times. Elton has often spoken about his friendship with Freddie, recalling how Freddie's sense of humor and generosity endeared him to those around him. One of Elton's favorite memories of Freddie involves a Christmas gift he received from him in 1991, shortly after Freddie's death. Freddie had arranged for a painting by one of Elton's favorite artists to be delivered to him, along with a note that read, Dear Sharon, I thought you'd like this. Love, Melina. The names Sharon and Melina were the playful drag names they had given each other during their wild nights out. Elton was deeply moved by the gesture, as it showed how much Freddie cared for his friends, even in his final days. Their friendship was also marked by a shared love of partying and excess, with both men known for their extravagant lifestyles. However, they also shared a deep understanding of the pressures that came with fame, and the toll it could take on their personal lives. In many ways, Freddie and Elton were kindred spirits, and their friendship remained strong until the very end. Number 8. The Creation of Bohemian Rhapsody Bohemian Rhapsody is widely regarded as Queen's masterpiece and one of the greatest rock songs of all time. The six-minute epic, written by Freddie Mercury, 
defied conventional song structures and blended rock, opera, and ballad elements into something entirely unique. But the creation of Bohemian Rhapsody was not without its challenges. Freddie had been working on the song for years, and he brought it to the band during the recording of their A Night at the Opera album in 1975. The song was highly ambitious, and its complexity presented technical challenges in the studio. The band spent weeks recording the song, layering multiple tracks of vocals and instruments to create the grandiose sound that defined the operatic section of the song. At one point, the band's producer, Roy Thomas Baker, joked that the tapes were so worn from overuse that they had become transparent. Despite initial skepticism from some quarters, including their record label, Queen insisted on releasing Bohemian Rhapsody as a single. It became an instant hit, topping the charts for nine weeks in the UK and solidifying Queen's place in rock history. The song's success was further boosted by its innovative music video, which is often credited with helping to popularize the music video format. Freddie never fully explained the meaning behind Bohemian Rhapsody, preferring to leave it open to interpretation. Some have speculated that the song's cryptic lyrics are autobiographical, while others believe it to be a surreal, abstract narrative. Whatever the case, Bohemian Rhapsody remains one of the most iconic and influential songs of all time, and it cemented Freddie Mercury's reputation as a musical genius. Number 7. Freddie's Party Lifestyle Freddie Mercury was known for his hedonistic lifestyle, and his parties were the stuff of legend. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Freddie hosted some of the most extravagant and decadent parties in the world of rock and roll. His infamous birthday party in Munich in 1979, held to celebrate his 33rd birthday, has gone down in history as one of the wildest nights ever. The party, which reportedly cost over $200,000, featured dwarfs serving cocaine on silver trays, naked waiters, and an array of eccentric performers. Freddie's love of excess extended beyond just his parties. He was also known for his lavish spending habits. He had a penchant for fine art, expensive clothing, and jewelry, and his homes were filled with valuable antiques and collectibles. Yet, despite his extravagant lifestyle, Freddie was also known for his generosity. He often bought gifts for his friends and loved ones, and he was known to give large sums of money to those in need. However, Freddie's party lifestyle also took a toll on his health. By the mid-1980s, he had begun to cut back on his partying, particularly after his HIV diagnosis. While he continued to enjoy life to the fullest, he became more focused on his music and his relationships in his later years. Freddie's ability to balance his wild side with his artistic genius is part of what made him such a captivating and enigmatic figure. Number 6. The meaning behind The Show Must Go On The Show Must Go On, one of Queen's most powerful and poignant songs, was written by Brian May, but is often associated with Freddie Mercury's battle with AIDS. Released in 1991, just weeks before Freddie's death, the song's lyrics take on a deeper meaning when viewed in the context of Freddie's illness. Lines like, Inside my heart is breaking, my makeup may be flaking, but my smile still stays on, reflect the immense physical and emotional pain Freddie was experiencing, yet his determination to continue performing and creating music. Freddie's vocal performance on the track is nothing short of remarkable, especially considering the toll that AIDS had taken on his body. According to Brian May, there were concerns that Freddie wouldn't be able to deliver the powerful vocal required for the song, but Freddie proved them wrong. Despite being gravely ill, Freddie's voice remained as strong and as passionate as ever, and his performance on The Show Must Go On stands as one of the most moving moments in Queen's discography. The song has since become a symbol of resilience and determination, not just for Freddie, but for anyone facing adversity. It's a fitting tribute to Freddie's indomitable spirit and his unwavering commitment to his art, even in the face of death. Number 5. His Final Days at Garden Lodge 
In the final months of his life, Freddie Mercury retreated to his home, Garden Lodge, in Kensington, London. Surrounded by close friends, including Mary Austin and Jim Hutton, Freddie spent his last days in relative seclusion, away from the prying eyes of the media. By this point, Freddie's health had deteriorated significantly due to complications from AIDS, and he was no longer able to leave the house. Despite his illness, Freddie remained determined to keep creating music for as long as he could. He continued to record with Queen, even as his body weakened. His final recording session took place in May 1991, just six months before his death. The song, Mother Love, was left unfinished, with Brian May later completing the final verse after Freddie passed away. Freddie's decision to withdraw from the public eye in his final days was characteristic of his private nature. Throughout his life, he had carefully controlled his image and personal life, and he wanted to spend his last moments in peace, surrounded by those he loved. His death on November 24, 1991, marked the end of an era, but his legacy continues to live on through his music. Number 4. The Secret of His Ashes One of the most enduring mysteries surrounding Freddie Mercury is the location of his ashes. After his death, Freddie was cremated, but only a select few people know where his ashes were scattered. Mary Austin, to whom Freddie entrusted this secret, has never revealed the location, honoring Freddie's wishes for privacy even in death. There has been much speculation about where Freddie's ashes might be, with some fans believing they were scattered in Lake Geneva, Switzerland, near his home in Montreux. Others believe they may have been buried in a secret location in London. Wherever they are, it's clear that Freddie wanted his final resting place to remain a private and personal matter. This secrecy reflects Freddie's lifelong desire to keep certain aspects of his life out of the public eye. While he was one of the most famous musicians in the world, Freddie was also a deeply private person who valued his autonomy. His decision to keep the location of his ashes a secret is a fitting final chapter in the life of a man who always maintained an air of mystery. Number 3. His Influence on Fashion and Style Freddie Mercury was not just a musical icon, he was also a fashion trailblazer. His bold and eclectic sense of style helped define the look of rock and roll in the 1970s and 1980s, and his influence can still be seen in fashion today. Throughout his career, Freddie's style evolved, reflecting both the trends of the time and his own personal tastes. In the early days of Queen, Freddie embraced the glam rock aesthetic, often wearing skin-tight jumpsuits, glitter, and makeup. His stage outfits were as flamboyant as his performances, and he quickly became known for his daring fashion choices. As Queen's music evolved, so did Freddie's style. By the late 1970s, he had adopted a more minimalist look, often wearing leather jackets, jeans, and t-shirts. However, he still retained his flair for the dramatic, often accessorizing with statement pieces like his iconic crown and cape ensemble, which he wore during Queen's live performances of We Are The Champions. Freddie's influence on fashion extended beyond just his stage outfits. His androgynous style, willingness to push boundaries, and refusal to conform to traditional gender norms have made him a style icon for generations of artists and fashion designers. Today, Freddie Mercury remains a symbol of individuality and self-expression, both in music and in fashion. Number 2. His Relationship with Jim Hutton Freddie Mercury's relationship with Jim Hutton was one of the most significant of his life. The two met in the mid-1980s, and they remained together until Freddie's death in 1991. Jim, an Irish hairdresser, was one of the few people who stayed by Freddie's side throughout his battle with AIDS, and he provided comfort and support during Freddie's final days. Jim and Freddie's relationship was private, and they kept it out of the public eye for the most part. However, those close to Freddie knew how much Jim meant to him. Jim later wrote a book about their relationship, titled Mercury and Me in which he described the deep love and affection they shared. 
One of the most poignant moments in their relationship came when Freddy asked Jim to be with him when he died. Jim honored this request, staying by Freddy's side in his final moments. After Freddy's death, Jim was devastated, but he continued to honor Freddy's memory, speaking fondly of their time together and the love they shared. Freddy's relationship with Jim Hutton was a source of comfort and stability in his later years, and it stands as a testament to the power of love, even in the face of illness and loss. Number 1. Freddy's Enduring Legacy Freddie Mercury's legacy is one that transcends time. Over 30 years after his death, Freddie remains one of the most beloved and influential figures in music history. His unique voice, magnetic stage presence, and fearless approach to creativity have inspired countless artists across genres, and his music continues to resonate with fans old and new. Freddie's influence extends beyond just his music. He is also remembered as a trailblazer for LGBTQ visibility in the entertainment industry. At a time when homosexuality was still stigmatized, Freddie's unapologetic approach to his identity helped pave the way for greater acceptance and representation. In addition to his contributions to music and LGBTQ rights, Freddie is also celebrated for his philanthropic efforts. Throughout his life, Freddie supported various charitable causes, and his legacy of giving continues through the Mercury Phoenix Trust, a charity founded in his memory to fight HIV AIDS. Freddie Mercury's impact on the world is immeasurable, and his music continues to inspire and uplift people around the globe. His story is one of courage, creativity, and self-expression, and it serves as a reminder of the power of art to transcend boundaries and touch the lives of millions.